So I'm going to do a video on how I set my gains. A gentleman asked me how I set my gains, so this is the response. Um, first, I guess I'd say set your gains with headroom. By headroom, I mean have an app that does more power than your subs need. Um, everybody sets their gains at max volume which leaves you nothing left. So if you get a quiet song, you can't turn it up a few more clicks to get it to the same level as the other songs you have. My deck goes up to 50. It doesn't clip all the way up, but I have my gains set at 38. I have my max volume set at 43. And there's a reason for that. Um, at 38, I have my sub amp set to 700 watts for my sub. My sub amp does 50, rated 1500 watts, but does more than that. And if I'm playing a song that's quieter than all the rest of the songs, at 38, it's freaking loud. But if that song's quiet, I can go up to 39, 40, get a little more to get it the same without clipping. And even though my head unit doesn't clip, my amplifier for my doors, the input voltage is 0 to 2 volts. My head unit's a 5 volt pre-out. So that's why I do have it set as low as I do. Not only to give me some headroom, but I don't want to overdrive the input on that amp. So before you set your gains, get to know your system, figure out what your deck puts out, figure out what the input voltages on your amps are, and then set accordingly. Um, I use a negative 10 dB for subs. That's what you should use. A lot of people say, oh, use a um, 0 dB so you don't ever clip. That's true. You won't ever clip, but the majority of your music, unless you're listen to some modern rap or like uh, decaf or rebased, it's all going to be quiet because you're never reaching the full potential of your system. Set it with a negative team 10 dB and have amps that do, for me, I try to go double the rated power of the subs because then it doesn't matter what track comes on because I'm only using half of the amp and I'm never going to the clipping on my deck it doesn't matter how loud the song that comes on is, it never clips. I might have to turn it down so I don't overdrive my sub too much power, but I that's better than clipping your sub. Now if you have an amp, say your sub's a thousand watts, and you buy a thousand watt amp, and you set that amp to a thousand watts, and you use negative 10 dB track to set your gains, the first time you get a song, that's recorded higher, you're going to clip your amp. I hope that makes sense. But, so what I would do when you go to set your gains is first, get you a multimeter and an oscilloscope. You can get them both off of Amazon for dirt cheap. And then find your max volume on your head unit and then go down like seven clicks and use that for your max volume. Then play a zero dB test track and look at the voltage coming out of your pre-outs. And then play a negative five and look at the voltage coming out of your pre-outs. And then look at it, then play a negative 10 and look at the voltage coming out of your pre-outs. It doesn't matter what deck you have or what the voltage is that it claims. It may do rated voltage, but you'll never be playing a rated voltage unless you have the volume all the way up, you have the subwoofer all the way up, you've got your EQ up, you got loud on. So don't worry about being about seven clicks down from your max clean because you're never getting rated voltage out of your RCAs anyways. Um, put your EQ flat, um, go into your crossovers for the sub, my max um, 
hertz for the crossovers, 250. So turn it all the way up to 250. If you have some sub subwoofer levels are like this. They go from negative to positive. If you have a negative to positive, this setting right here is a gain. So set it at zero. Some head units go from zero to plus, and that's it. They don't go negative. That's not a gain. That's a percentage of your RCA output. Turn that all the way up and set your gain. If you set it at zero, you're never coming anywhere near your full pre-out voltage. So at 10, that's 100% using your pre-out voltage, depending on where your volume is. At one, that's only 10% of your pre-out voltage. So when you set your subamp, turn that all the way up. Only if your head unit is from 0 to 10, and that's it. If it goes negative, set it at 0. And then get on Google and find out. They have charts you can use, or you can do the math. If you want to do the math, you take... Um, The ohm rating of your subwoofers, depending on if you have one, if you have dual voice coil, multiple subs, whatever the final impedance is, and we'll just use one sub for an example because it's easier to do the math. My sub's 2 ohms, it's rated 900 watts RMS. So to find out the voltage you need coming out of your amp to get 900 out of it, take 2 ohms times 900 and then square it get the square root of that whatever that number is for mine it's 43.3 volts that's where you need to set your amp to get the 900 i have mine set at 700 my amp does 1500 plus so i'm using less than half of my amp and like i like I said before, I have so much headroom, no matter what song comes on, even though I'm set with a negative 10 dB, I never come close to clipping. I'm hoping all this makes sense because it's, it's kind of confusing for some people. It's a lot to take in. But yeah, if you don't set your head unit and your amps with headroom, you're always going to feel like your system's lacking. You're never going to get the full potential out of it. Um, especially if you're using zero dB tracks, you're you're never going to be happy. You're gonna you're gonna be upset with your purchase. You're gonna be like, why doesn't this perform? Well, that's why. Um, very few tracks are recorded at that high of a recording level. The average is probably around ten. Some are negative fifteen. So negative ten is where you should put it, but. Be careful, because if you're maxing out your amp when you set your gains, the first time you play a song that's recorded at a higher level, it will clip your signal. Um, even my door speakers, I have a Sound Digital Evo X2 400.4. Um, I'm only using half the voltage out of that to my doors, and it's insanely loud for what it is, but that's another thing. Look at the sensitivity of the speakers you're going to buy before you buy them. The higher the sensitivity, the less power it needs for them to get loud. I think the speakers I have in my doors, the, nine, the sensitivity is like 96, which is pretty good. So it doesn't take a lot to get the sound out of them. Um, subwoofers. The box is everything. Doesn't matter what brand you buy, how big, how cool, what people tell you. If you don't have the right box for your sub, 
That's never going to perform the way you expect it to. It doesn't matter how much power you throw at it. It'll never sound the way you expected. So, I mean, obviously, if you're on a budget and prefabs your only way to go, that's what it is what it is. But prefabs are usually too small. They're usually tuned too high. Um... Yeah, boxes, everything. I've got one um, kicker L7 Q-Class 12 in here on 700 watts, and it's, it's loud. It's more than I need. And some I've had people in the comments tell me, oh, should have got a sundown, should have got this, should have got that. Yeah, sundowns are cool. They get loud. They have their place. But it's not a daily driver sub. It's a competition sub. If you're doing demos, if you're metering, yeah, cool, get that. But what, everything else you're going to have to get with it also, you have to think about it. You're going to have to upgrade all your electrical, batteries, lithium, um, alternators, all that comes with it. If you find an efficient sub and you get an efficient box, right now I'm sub running 700 watts to my sub. I've got a one aught cable going to it. I've done the big three. I've got a big AGM battery. I've got the stock alt. I have no electrical problems. So I'm only running 700 watts. But if I were to put a sundown in here and get it to perform to its capabilities, I'd have to get like a 3,000 watt amp. I'd have to get more wires, do bigger electrical, add a battery bank, because your stock alt, your stock wiring, all that can't take it. So, when you're planning out your system, think about what you're going to get. A daily driver does not need a big, giant sundown, or a phi, or a, it's, it's just not practical. And it's more, nobody drives around listening to their bass that loud anyways. Yeah, when you're showing off your buddies or whatever, that's cool. But like my stereo, I have the gain set at 38, which is loud two songs in here and that's you want to turn it down your ears hurt my normal driving listening range if I'm driving around town and there's not a lot of road and wind noise I'm at like 20 on the freeway I'm at like 25 to 30 that's it that's all you need if somebody wants to hear what I'll do I'll go to 38 if I want to show off I'll bump it up to 43 and give my subs a couple extra hundred watts, which they'll take because it's clean power. They won't take it forever, but they'll take it for a bit, and you'll, you'll know when they start to warm up if you're over driving them. But yeah, that's my suggestion. Get the most efficient sub you can find. Double the power of your amps. That way you're only using half of them. Your amps aren't working hard. You never have to worry about clipping unless you clip the head unit. And, yeah, that's about it. Just get to know your system. Know what the voltages are. Know what change in those dB levels, how it affects your voltage. Um, never set your amp to its max rating because you're, you're right on the edge of clipping all the time. So, yeah, get a bigger amp than you need. Don't set it with a zero dB. Some sound quality guys, like high SQ guys, they'll say you need to set it with this OD, but, but if, if you have headroom in your amps, even if you're going for sound quality, which mine is more based on sound quality, this is my work vehicle, I'm in it for two plus hours a day, which is why I put the stereo in here. If you have bigger amps than you need so you're never anywhere near clipping you can set with a negative 10 and you don't have to you still have great sound quality you're never worried about distortion what else can i think of i don't know do the big three you may not need a bigger alternator if you're not running crazy power you're only running three four hundred watts you don't need a bigger alternator but you do need the big three grounds at a minimum Stock grounds, the wire size, a little car like this, I think it's, 
eight gauge wire for the grounds and the power wire coming from the alternator but is it a true eight gauge it's the diameter of an eight gauge but the wire side of it questionable so at a minimum add some grounds the stock grounds they haven't ground the paint and made a good connection it's just bolted to the firewall or wherever else so to minimum upgrade your your grounds I'd put a wire from your alternator to your um, battery um, with the big three some people say you have to run your ground from the battery over your alternator that depends there's a bushing where your alternator connects yes you would have to do that but if not anywhere on the block is fine don't put it on the valve cover it has to be on the block but that alternator is bolted directly to the block with two big bolts plenty of surface area and that block is solid metal you don't need to go all the way to your alternator just the closest place you can get a good ground to the block that's good enough and then put one to your frame this car doesn't have a frame it's, it's a unibody whatever you call it and so put a ground to somewhere a solid spot um, putting it to a fender not good they're usually just spot welded get it to a real solid structural part of the body grind the paint off put your ground there and then yeah always leave yourself some headroom you never have to worry about clipping um, don't worry about your max RCA voltage if you're worried about RCA voltage because say your amp can take has an 8 volt input well I've never heard of a deck that'll do 8 volts the highest I've heard of is 6 this one's 5 for me to get 5 out of it I have to turn the base all the way up I have to turn everything all the way up which you're never going to get it if you want more output voltage from your deck get you a line driver and bump up the voltage but honestly you really don't need it your amp makes what it makes all the time all the gain on it does is how sensitive it is to the signal coming in so whether you have six volts or two volts you're going to get the same output out of the amp the only difference is your gain won't be turned as high up I think that's it can't think of anything else if I do I'll make another video but headroom it's the most important thing you can have